Hello, my name is Ben Style at Dysel Arbor Biosciences, and I'm here to present a brief presentation on how to design DNA for MyTXTL. This is intended for new users or students that are learning to use the system. So MyTXTL is a cell-free protein expression system. So that means that it is derived from a cell extract from E. coli, and it has all the components needed to make protein from a DNA template. And this includes then the E. coli RNA polymerase for transcription, tRNAs, uh, ribosomes, translation factors, and other energy regeneration molecules for translation. There's no cells present. Uh, the express protein is immediately accessible without lysis or purification because it's just basically floating in solution since there's no cell wall. And they can often be used directly uh, in an activity assay. So no purification, you just dilute the endpoint reaction and it can go into your assay, which is a great advantage of cell-free systems. MyTXTL can be used to express all types of proteins, including enzymes, toxic proteins that might otherwise kill a cell if it's expressed in them, and antibodies with the newer kit version we just released. The MyTXTL kit contains a master mix, um, again made from the E. coli cell extract, and is supplemented with other additives to improve transcription and translation. These kits also come with a positive control so that you can control for whether you set up the reactions correctly, um, with whether your construct you designed uh, should be working properly. And that one in the kit expresses GFP uh, from a T7 promoter, and then the Kit also includes a helper plasmid or an inducer plasmid that expresses the T7 RNA polymerase, which is, of course, required for T7 promoter based uh, transcription. So, the steps of what happens in a MyTXTL reaction so, you, you take the reaction mix out, uh, you add your DNA, and you bring it up to the right volume. Um, your DNA, of course, is encoding your protein of interest. And once added to the reaction, transcription occurs immediately and is quickly followed by translation. So it's important that uh, the DNA template you put into the reaction is actually capable of supporting transcription and that the RNA made from that transcription event is compatible with translation by E. coli machinery. So we should discuss some basic elements of DNA important for function in the MyTXTL reaction. So the most common template used for protein expression is a plasma DNA template. Since people are often using E. coli for this or other cells, um, you need a plasma that you put into this E. coli, you select for it with an antibiotic or another selectable marker. Uh, this plasma backbone is shown here for an example where you have a promoter followed by an untranslated region uh, your inserted gene of interest, so the open reading frame here, a stop codon, and then a terminator sequence, so to terminate transcription. And then there are other elements in the backbone of the plasmid that are important for propagation in E. coli. So the promoter, as the first element of importance, it enables transcription by an E. coli RNA polymerase or the T7 RNA polymerase. And that makes the mRNA, which is then, of course, the template for translation. A pro promoter here can either be constitutive, which means it's expressed all the time, or inducible, which means you have to add an inducer, so such as IPTG for a PET vector, which is a very common vector used for uh, expression of proteins in E. coli. We recommend that if you're starting uh, from scratch that you use a constitutive T7 promoter for the highest protein yield, but the MyTXDL system supports any vector currently used uh, in the E. coli for protein expression. The untranslated region, it's an adenosine-rich sequence at the 5' prime end of an mRNA transcript uh, that helps recruit the E. coli ribosome. There are strong and weak UTRs that can determine how much translation you get. And this UTR also includes ribosome binding site, which has a shine delgarno sequence, which is actually complementary to the ribosomal RNA in the uh, bacterial ribosome, so the 16S RNA, uh, which you may have learned about already. 
And so this uh, depiction below is just showing that the mRNA sequence encompasses uh, from the promoter through the terminator and that the open reading frame is starting just downstream of your UTR RBS site. And so the, the open reading frame in, starts with an AEG or, or ATG in the DNA and that encodes a methionine like um, all, almost all open reading frames do. And then the open reading frame, of course, is for your protein of interest. You can add fusion or purification tags to the end or solubility tags, whatever you need to, uh, but it all needs to be included within the ORF. And then after that uh, is the stop codon, so the end of translation. So you put the stop codon where you want translation to end. And the terminator sequence after the stop codon, that's required to terminate transcription. Uh, kind of forms a hairpin and makes the RNA polymerase fall off. Uh, this is important so that uh, one in plasmids, you don't get transcription of the rest of the plasmid. And in, in the form of a linear DNA, it, I think it also helps uh, stabilize the sequence so it's not degraded by any nucleases that may be present in the reaction. So linear DNA templates are also supported in the MyTXTL system. So that means you don't actually have to do cloning. Uh, you don't actually have to use the plasmid. You can just use linear DNA. And this requires all the same elements as a plasmid. But because it's a linear DNA molecule, uh, there's no need to propagate it in E. coli. So there's none of this other stuff, uh, selectable markers, antibiotic resistance gene, origin of replication. None of that is required for uh, making the linear DNA. You just need the basic functional elements uh, to be compatible uh, with the MyTXTL system. So the advantage of linear DNA is that you, you don't require cloning. It can be a PCR product or just simply, something you simply order from a commercial vendor. Uh, so you can source this DNA, whether plasmid or linear, from commercial vendors if you wish, or you can make it in-house. I will mention GenScript specifically has their plasmid backbone stocked for, and you are free to clone into them if you wish. Um, the design of DNA fragments for cloning in your plasmid might require some modifications uh, depending on what you want to do. So they, but the DNA fragments must include at the 5' end NCO1 restriction site if you're going to clone into our positive control plasmid. And that actually includes a stop, start codon, so there's a slight change to the first uh, amino acid of your ORF. And then on the other end of the fragment, you need an XHO1 site. And we also recommend about 12 base pairs on either end of that linear DNA fragment if you're going to be using it for cloning so that the restriction site enzymes have somewhere to land. And then the DNA fragments uh, cloned or designed in this way can be inserted into our T7 DGFP positive control plasma that comes with the kit uh, by a simple cut and paste method, uh, of which there's many protocols out there. Um, and I should mention the plasmid we have is amp resistant, so that's very common and should be pretty easy to use. There's also con considerations for DNA propagation and purification. If you prepare the plasmid yourself, we encourage you to either use this Zymo Pure Plasmid Purification System uh, if you want to do a single step purification or you need to do a two step purification because many other uh, kits for preparing plasmids from E. coli uh, have too much stuff left over that inactivates the MyTXDL reaction or, or lowers your yield. So just a simple PCR purification kit cleanup for a second step is all that's really needed. And a lot of times those kits take like 10 more minutes and it's not too much work. Uh, linear templates prepared by PCR can be also purified in a similar way to the PCR purification kit method. And then DNA eluted should be in nuclease-free water or 10 millimolar tris. Um, at a concentration of greater than or equal to 24 nanomolar for the plasma DNA if, if you don't want to have to concentrate your DNA at the end uh, in order for you to have enough or a small enough volume so that you don't uh, take up too much volume of the MyTXTL reaction with your DNA. Uh, or if it's linear DNA, because a little bit more of that is required for the TXTL reaction, uh, usually 96 nanomolar or greater is sufficient. As far as the quantity of DNA needed for linear DNA, you will likely need around 120 nanograms to 400 nanograms of DNA per 12 microliter reaction, which is our standard reaction size. And that depends on your application, your 
protein yield and uh, your needs. Uh, for plasma DNA, you should need 100 na 120 nanograms or less of DNA per MyTXTL reaction. Um, plasmids with inducible promoters can require a little bit more at times to get the maximum yield, but usually our standard recommendations is that for concentration is enough, but you may find that if you use two to three X more, you may get uh, even more protein if that's what you're going for, like maximum yield. And that's it for the recommendations we have for designing your DNA and preparing it for my TXTL. So thank you for trying my TXTL and good luck with your experiments.